Hey everyone, this is a short lecture on uh, Bertrand Russell and the problem of other minds and the argument by analogy. Um, so to start with, I think what you should do is um, try to put yourself in a position where it doesn't actually seem crazy to ask whether people have minds. Um, just imagine, you know, you know that you have a mind because you can remember doing things and you can think to yourself and you can kind of introspect on it. But um, think about other people, other beings around you. You know, you um, you see bodies move around and you hear them make noises and stuff, but um, you don't really have any access to what's going on inside of them, inside their heads. You can only sort of see the surfaces and hear the noises they make and so on. So um, if we're going to know about what's going on inside of them, we have to make an inference. And Russell thinks that the inference we make is by analogy. So um, I take my own case first. I know that when I do certain behaviors that um, I have thoughts and desires. Like if I want a cold drink um, and I believe that a cold drink is in the fridge, then I'll go and move to the fridge, retrieve a cold drink, and so on. Um, so similarly, if I see somebody else go to the fridge and get a cold drink, then I might think, okay, they had the belief that a cold drink was in the fridge, and they had the desire to get a cold drink, and in general, they have a mind very much like mine. That's an analogical argument, and it's not totally secure. We could maybe get things wrong sometimes, but Russell thinks that um, the more complicated a being's behavior is, then the more sure we can be that its behavior is the result of a mind and not the result of just um, some kind of memorized behavior or something like that. Now, um, one thing that I saw people saying on the discussion boards was that science has proven that other people have minds. And that's not really true, actually. If you think about um, the position that I was talking about at the start of this lecture, where you think, you know, we can, we can see the surfaces of people's bodies and we can listen to the noises that they make, but we always have to make uh, extra inference to know what's going on inside their heads. Um, scientists are in the very same position we are. They just have better tools. So they can, for example, put electrodes in someone's brain and they can get electrical readouts and so on. But really, that's not getting any closer to what's inside their minds than what we see from the outside, right? It's just um, maybe the electroencephalogram draws some squiggles on a piece of paper and then we can interpret that in a certain way. Um, so really, science um, can't prove that other people have minds any more than we can, we ordinary people can. But... Um, they have better tools, and in a sense, all of the work on cognitive science and neuroscience and so on, it presumes that other people do have minds from the get-go, and then it tries to figure out how they work.